Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I want to give you guys a couple of interesting updates to the Radeon RX 8000 series of GPUs from AMD. We're going to mostly focus on performance, but we'll also touch just a little bit on the specifications for these upcoming graphics cards, and we'll throw in some stuff for the Strix Point APUs as well to boot. Now, with the RX 8000 series, it of course will be comprised of a couple of RDNA 4 dies. The first is N44, which will power the lower end variants an N48, which of course will make up for the more powerful cards. This is information that we've known for some time. Now, there were some reports, um, of course, that we would see higher end GPUs in the RDNA 4 lineup. However, this no longer seems to be AMD's plan. Basically, the highest end SKUs, which did include actually MCM variants, so chimplets essentially, they were canned. So, this is what uh, has now been postponed for RDNA 5, and yes, RDNA 5 is shaping up to be absolutely awesome, and I'm actually going to be putting out a video on that possibly this week. I actually was going to put it out last week, but let's just say I had a couple of updates, so essentially things got delayed, and I accidentally knocked a glass that was on the table, and fortunately it didn't fall on the floor, so all is good. Anywho, all the Watts on Twitter has actually posted a couple of updates, so we'll start out with this tweet. Now, it does look... Well, kind of gobbledygook, but actually, if you kind of spend a second to just go over it, the information is reasonably easy to decipher. So, RDNA 3's highest-end GPUs, so for example, the 7900 XTX, will still be the faster GPUs in AMD's lineup. Then, of course, we will have the higher-end N48 GPUs, followed by the cut-down N31s, so that would be, for example, the 7900 GRE, and then we would have N32, um, the fastest configuration, then the fastest configuration of N44, and then finally bringing up the rear would be N33. They have also confirmed that the GPUs are considerably smaller, and they will also be utilizing GDDR6 memory. Now, this honestly makes a lot of sense. I actually ran this by a source of mine, and they essentially have told me that all of this information is correct. And furthermore, um, this also matches quite closely some information that I put out in previous videos. I was told by a couple of sources, although I still don't have the exact die size, the N48 is going to be low 200 millimeters square. So, for example, you know, let's say 210, 220, somewhere around there. But N44 will be significantly smaller because, well, quite frankly, it just doesn't have so much stuff um, in terms of the number of workgroup processors and all the other bits and pieces that, of course, are important to, well, make a GPU work. As for the specifications themselves, uh, these are a little bit older, but the last configuration that I was told is the highest end configuration of N48 would feature 32 workgroup processors, um, 44 meanwhile halves this, and the last piece of information I had in terms of infinity cache is 64 megabytes, but honestly, it's very possible that that information is incorrect, as I've only received that from one source, but um, I was also to, uh, told, excuse me, 256-bit GDDR6. And again, this is a little bit older. Previously, I had been told it was uh, 32 and 16 for the workgroup processor count, but it was 192-bit and 96-bit for the memory bus. As for the clock frequency, um, basically speaking, it does seem that there is a considerable clock frequency bump over the previous generation. I'm basically told low 3 gigahertz is looking very likely. And of course, there have been all of the reports we've seen from Sony that essentially does seem to indicate that RDNA 4's ray tracing, assuming, of course, you can infer that uh, we'll see the same technology in terms of the leap, um, would be much better than RDNA 2 and RDNA 3. I also did promise you guys a small update concerning the performance figures of Strix Point. And what I'll tell you guys is pretty much the information I've now received from multiple sources is obviously this is somewhat... Um, power dependent, but generally speaking, the iGPU is clocking to absolutely ridiculous 
ridiculous speeds, like way over 3 gigahertz. So I do think that this is going to be an absolutely awesome GPU. Furthermore, it also seems that now um, it won't be too long until we actually start to get some pretty damn accurate leaks. Because basically speaking, what has now started to happen is that uh, Strix point numbers from what I'm being told are now being shared with OEMs and basically it's probably going to be a couple of months at this point before we really start to know what AMD are like, you know, pretty much doing at the absolute most. Computex, there's going to be a lot of really big announcements. I'm trying to confirm some yet more Zen stuff that I was told. I was going to make that today's video, but I've already put out a couple of Zen updates, so I kind of wanted to wait anyway, because again, I'm trying to confirm some information that I was receiving. But well, let's just say that I think Zen 5 is going to... I think it's going to be very good. I am still trying to be a little bit pessimistic because I don't like to get overexcited myself. But it's very difficult not to with all the things that I'm hearing. So I think Zen 5 is going to be really good. Um, I think RDNA 4 could also be absolutely fantastic. The real question for me is the pricing and also the general strategy AMD uses. Um, as for RDNA 4 and the release date, it's still very difficult because I have one source absolutely swearing to me it's going to be the first quarter of next year. However, everyone else is telling me no, that isn't true. It is actually going to be the second half of this year and one thing that could possibly explain that is um, basically someone had told me that what might be happening is people are confusing things because the mobile RDNA 4 um, GPUs those are going to be released in the first quarter of next year either way I will be super interested to see this next generation of CPUs and GPUs things have been well I wouldn't say boring in the PC gaming space but uh Let's just be honest, I think that um, it will be very cool to finally see what Zen 5 actually brings to the table, as well as, of course, Intel's Arrow Lake as well. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.